with us. Today we're, we are going to be coming to the second half of Genesis 18. Uh, so as we, as we begin to look, as we begin to continue in this conversation, we're picking up in the middle of the conversation that Abraham had uh, with the Lord and the guest. Remember, this was the conversation where the Lord comes with these two other angels and uh, Abraham recognizes that it's the Lord and honors him, brings food, gifts, uh, provisions, offering, praise to the Lord. And the Lord reveals to Sarah and Abraham that in a year he will return and she will be with child. And that child will be the one that continues the promise, the covenant, the gift that God has made with Abraham. Now, if you remember, Sarah laughs. And the Lord's response is, is anything too hard for God? And now in this conversation uh, that we're going to pick up today, we see that the Lord decides he wants to reveal what's happening to Abraham, wants to reveal that they have come to the earth, that they have come to respond to the outcry of wickedness and sin, of unrighteousness of the city of Sodom. And as the two angels go to look at the city and see what's really happening, the Lord remains with Abraham. And this is what we read in Genesis 18, verse 22. The men turned away and went towards Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find fifty righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Now remember, Abraham's nephew Lot is living in the city of Sodom, so uh, there's probably a little bit of concern for Abraham for his nephew, but also for the righteous in general. He pleads with God, uh, uh, claiming the character of the one true God who, who's not going to punish the righteous for the sins of the unrighteous. The conversation continues, and Abraham, even though the Lord has has agreed to spare the city for the sake of 50 righteous people. Abraham says, basically, don't, don't, don't get mad at me, but what if there's less? And what if there's less? And what if there's less? And we end up with, the, at the end of the conversation, the, Lord's agree, the Lord agrees to spare Sodom if he can find just 10 righteous people. Now we'll see what happens to Sodom and Gomorrah next week. But what we have to see here is the reality that a small number of us as Christ followers can make a massive difference. Uh, I heard a number of years back, I read about a study two or three years ago that, that claims that it's, a, it's an economic study, but it claims that 25% of any population can bring massive change, culture shift to any group, 25%. And then in a BBC article that's more recent, I just uh, saw it, it's claiming, it's talking about political change specifically, but claiming that three and a half percent of a population is influential enough to change the trajectory of a whole group. Small numbers of people have incredible power and influence. We live in a world that's fallen and broken. We are part of a universal church that is mired in scandal and broken by sin and in many ways doesn't look much different than the world around us. And if you're like me, when you look at those problems and the issues that we see, it can be paralyzing. What you and I can do is live for Christ. Live out the radical calling that God has, has placed on our lives. Live in light of the gospel. Live in the way that God has created us to live. We can't fix the big problems of the world. Only God can do that. Only a miracle will do that. But we can live for Jesus. And just as this text reminds us, a very small number of people can have a massive influence whether it's 3.5% or 25%, whatever it is, let's be that small minority that God uses 
to change our church, change our country, and change the world. Father, help us to be faithful. Help us to live the radical righteousness that Jesus Christ showed us. Help us to live in light of the gospel that has changed us. Let us not only be hearers of the word, but doers. Let us act. I pray that we could be influential as a small number of Christ followers, influential in your kingdom coming to this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.